Hello dear friends, this is you Humphreys. I'm glad that you tuned in on me again for a little 10 minute message. I'm speaking to you by the grace of God on the obedience of Joseph at Christmas. Uh, Joseph was, was the man who was engaged to Mary. And at that time, an engagement meant that there would be no relationship sexually until the marriage was con consummated, of course, and that would take sometimes a year. But anyway, he was engaged to Mary, and while he was engaged, she was found to be with child. But the child was by the Holy Spirit. And Joseph, being a just man, was not willing to put her away publicly, but he said, I will divorce her privately. In those days, according to the rules of the law, a person engaged was practically like a person who was married. And if they broke that engagement, they would need to, to, have, to have a divorce from that engagement. But he didn't want to do it publicly and bring any shame on Mary, so he wanted to do it secretly. And the, and the word said that, and the word and the counsel and the law said that they could do that with just two witnesses secretly. But while he thought on these things, the, the Lord appeared to him in a vivid dream and said to him, Joseph, do not fear to take unto you Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she shall bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. And so here is something that we see that changed the life of Joseph and, of course, of Mary. But Joseph was a just man, and so he said, I'm not, I'm not trying to do anything to hurt her any worse than she is already done. But he had thought that she had been with another man and become pregnant. But she had not. She was a virgin. But she, that which was conceived in her was of the Holy Spirit. In the book of Luke, we read again in the first chapter that the Spirit of God spoke to Mary and said that uh, you shall become pregnant and with child, but the child shall be, uh, the Holy Spirit shall pass over you, and you, over you, and you shall become pregnant with a son. And thou shalt call his name Emmanuel, and he will save his people from their sins, and it will mean that God is with us. And so it was true that we find this in the Word of God, that Joseph had to change his plans. He had planned a, 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 a engagement and then a great wedding and then all of this, but he had to change all of it. And so it was changed because he was willing to do it. And he obeyed the Lord. And he married her, believing that God was had, had, had instructed him to do it. Believing that that which was conceived in her was divine. It was of God. That man had nothing to do with it. And he believed it and obeyed. Obeyed the Lord and married Mary. And to, and then uh, later she had a child. And then later on, uh, he. but while they were engaged, the Bible said they had no relationship together sexually, whatever. But after marriage and after the birth of Jesus, they did have uh, con conception and had some other children. But thank God Jesus was born of the virgin. The only person in the whole world ever born of a virgin was Jesus Christ. And he was born of the virgin because the Bible said he was born of a virgin. And we believe it because even as Joseph believed, we believe in our obedience there comes blessings to God. We need to learn to obey God. Obey him just like Joseph obeyed. Obey him when sometimes you don't understand. I'm sure Joseph didn't understand fully how in the world the Holy Spirit could have conceived in that woman's womb a child. But he accepted it and believed it. We need to believe and make changes where it's necessary to make those changes. Over in the Bible, in the book of uh, Romans, in the 12th chapter of Romans, uh, it says that we are to uh, present our bodies a living sacrifice, which is wholly acceptable to God. And be not, O oh God, conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you can prove that good will of God. And sometimes the things that are, seem to be right are not right as you consider the ways of the world. 
but you need to consider the ways of God. And you find the ways of God by looking to the Lord. You find a plan and a purpose and then you walk in the will of God and you'll be blessed. And you'll be blessed and you'll find. Over in the book of 1 Corinthians in that second chapter it says, Who has known the mind of the Lord that you can instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Dear Christian friend, praise God, you've got the mind of Christ. That don't mean that you know everything he does. But it does mean that you have a mind now that has been touched by the power of God. And your thoughts now are coming from him. Many, many times those thoughts will rise out of your new heart. And you will have good thoughts and right thoughts. And those thoughts are to be obeyed. When they come to you, as the Spirit of God leads you, then you learn to obey the word of the Lord. How do we obey the Lord? We obey the Lord by listening to Him, praying to Him, and letting Him direct our ways. Over in the book of, uh, of uh, Romans, in the 8th chapter, it says, We have not received the spirit of fear to bondage, but we received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. And so you see, you're a child of God. You're born again. You belong to God. And the Lord loves you, and you're His forever. And therefore, you can say, by the grace of God, Hallelujah, I have not a spirit of fear, but now I can call my God Father, and Jesus Christ is my Lord. And so it's important. The Bible says, For the Holy Spirit will bear witness with your spirit that you are the child of God. And so the Holy Spirit will bear witness with your spirit. That is, the Lord will give you a thought that comes into your heart and immediately goes to your mind and it'll be a thought from the Lord and it'll be something that you need to do and when you get that conviction that this is what I ought to do then do it don't put it off obey the Lord obey the Lord the Bible says obedience is better than sacrifice and to hearken to the Lord is better than oh God anything else that you can offer and so we need to learn to obey the Lord. To obey the Lord. Joseph obeyed and out of it came a great blessing. There was born in Bethlehem a wonderful Savior which is Christ our Lord. And then he had the privilege of molding that little baby as it grew up in the carpenter's shop in Nazareth. And Joseph obeyed the Lord and waited on God and did the best he could as a father to his to his son and to the children of God, knowing in his heart that Jesus was special, different, divine, and holy. And so it is that we need to learn how to seek God's will and to seek God's way in all that we do. Learn to obey the Lord. Uh, Defer Bonhoeffer has said, uh, to obey the Lord is to, is to believe in the Lord. And if you really believe in the Lord, you will obey the Lord. And so it's important that if we really do believe in Him, that we obey Him, that we follow where He leads us. I know sometimes it'll change your plans. I know one day, not too many years ago, I was living in a house and a home with my wife, and I expected to live there until I died. But she passed away, and I was alone in the house, and I was there somewhat about a year, and uh, and my son-in-law said he, he thought I should go into a retirement home and not have to take care of a house because I was there alone by myself and at my age and so I prayed and I felt it was of God and the Lord opened the door for me at this place I'm in right now it's a retirement center now I don't know how long I'll be here but right now I believe I'm where God wants me now when he and if he should lead me otherwise I think he'll show me and I'm willing to go but I want to go, and I want to do what God wants me to do. And I want you to do that. I want you to follow where the Lord leads you. I want you to follow your conscience as best you can in doing the will of God. And base it on the Word of God and the divine direction of the Holy Spirit in your life. Oh, praise the Lord. God help you to do that. God help you to do that. To know that the Lord loves you and He'll guide you in the way you need to go. Amen. Just learn to obey the Lord as best you can. Obey Him as best you can. Hallelujah.
when we walk in the way in the light of his word what a glory he sheds on his way well if we abide with him still he will walk in his will if we learn to trust and obey trust and obey there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey what a fellowship sweet just to sit at his feet and to walk by his side in the way where he said what he says we will do where he sins we will go never fear only trust and obey trust and obey for there's no other way to be happy in jesus but to trust and obey amen believe and trust him obedience is important amen god bless you if you haven't prayed and ask the lord to come in your heart as savior you need a prayer a simple prayer and ask him say god forgive me and please i believe in jesus i believe he died for me i believe he paid for all my sins i'm trusting you lord god to save me come in my heart help me live for you i believe you rose again and i believe you're coming back in jesus name amen pray a prayer something like that and praise god you can know you belong to god a child of the lord and you'll live forever god loves you and i love you and may the lord help you find your good church and worship God with his people and may the hand of the Lord be upon you and learn to endeavor daily sometimes hourly to obey the Lord as best you can amen and amen